the great conductor, Arturo Toscanini, had just conducted Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, and the audience loved it. They stood and stomped their feet and whistled and clapped, and he bowed three times, and then he acknowledged his orchestra. And when the applause died down, he turned to his orchestra and whispered in a way that they thought he might be angry. He said, gentlemen, and he followed that up with, I am nothing, which was surprising because he, he had a big ego. And then he said, you are nothing. They'd heard that in practice before. And then he said in an adoring voice, Beethoven is everything, everything, everything. And so it is for us as believers, we say Jesus is everything, everything, everything. Welcome to Truth Talk with Ed Skipper, published every Monday and Thursday at 6 a.m. Pacific time, where I take the truth of scripture and apply it to your daily living. Paul writes to the Colossians in chapter 1, verse 18, the latter part of the verse, speaking of Jesus, he is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. The beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, that is the supreme one, the most important one. From among the dead, meaning his resurrection means many resurrections will follow. He's supreme and he's unwilling to share that supremacy with me. So our job, our sole duty as Christians is to bring attention, not to ourselves, but to Jesus Christ. I'm reminded when I was in seventh or eighth grade playing basketball and the cheerleaders had a little cheer when there was a jump ball. And I still distinctly remember them saying, jump and jump, jump and jump. And I loved it. I loved hearing my name. But when people looked at the cheerleaders, they were redirected toward me. And as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we want this. When people look at us, they are redirected toward Jesus Christ. Now, Paul goes on in verse 19. He says, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Jesus Christ is fully God. And because he's fully God and you can be in union with him or are in union with him if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you too can have fullness in God. That is exciting. You can be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And how is it that we do this? Well, first, let me tell you a story about my grandmother on my dad's side. She used to fill Alka-Seltzer bottles with dimes. And when we would come to visit then, she would give us that Alka-Seltzer bottle with dimes in it. It would be full or partially full, depending on how long it was between visits. Now, we loved it when the bottle was full and we got a complete bottle of dimes. And so it is, I love the thought that I can be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God because the fullness of God dwells in Jesus Christ and I am in Jesus. So how do we experience this fullness? By focusing our attention on Jesus. I remember hearing that when you're hammering a nail, you should focus your attention not on your thumb, but on the head of the nail. How many times have I hit my thumb because I watched my thumb and you hit what you watch? So let's be watching, focusing on Jesus Christ and experiencing fullness in him. For more on how you can keep your attention focused on Jesus, check out episode 166 for a tip on that. And I will include a link in the description below. And if you are watching on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And until next time, may you bring attention to Jesus Christ, focus on him, and experience fullness in him.